Hi everybody, this is John Andrews again, Digital and Social Media Manager for Redport Information Assurance. In my previous video covering symmetric key encryption, I covered the most basic way of encrypting a message through the method of creating only one key in order to access the information. But this technique could cause some security issues, which is where we have public-private key encryption, which is mostly necessary. The idea of this type of encryption is simply by looking at the name. You have one key which is public and one key which is private. Usually the sender has the public key in order to encrypt it and the receiver has the private key in order to decrypt it. The idea of this is so that the receiver is the only person who can open it, which is why they have the private key. The idea of the public key, however, is that anybody who wishes to send a message can simply use the public key, but only the one with the private key can open it. But some of the ways in which I'm going to teach you how to create these two keys are as follows. First, you're going to assume two prime numbers. Now, for those of you who don't know who prime numbers are, they are numbers who are only divisible by one in itself. For instance, the number five. There are no other common factors that divide into five other than one and five. Another number would be 13. But for this step, we are to choose two prime numbers, usually the higher the better, and label each one P and Q. For this example, I will choose the numbers 11 and 23 and label each one P and Q. Now the next step is to find N and Z. N is simply by definition P times Q, which would be respectively 11 times 23, which equals 253. So N in this case equals 253. Now Z, on the other hand, by definition is P minus 1 times Q minus 1, which would be 10 times 22, which equals 222. So in this case, or 220, excuse me. So in this case, Z equals 220. The next step is to find an E, which is going to be a number that does not go into Z. This E value will be used in the equation to encrypt the message. So the objective now is to find a number that does not go in the 220. I'll choose the number 3 because 3 doesn't go in the 220 evenly. You're going to use this E number to figure out a D, which is going to be part of the equation used to decrypt the message. Now in order to find a D, it first has to be less than our Z value, which is 220. So knowing that, we look at the equation D equals M times Z plus 1 all over E. When we plug in the values, we have to get D equals M times 220 plus 1 over 3. But since we don't have an M yet, we have to figure out which lowest number M plugs into the equation where we get an exact value with no repeating decimals. For instance, let's plug in the number 1 for M. 1 times 220 equals 220 plus 1 equals 221. And 221 divided by 3 equals 73.6 repeating. You want the lowest number m for the equation, so since it's not an exact value, let's plug in the number 2 for m. 2 times 220 equals 440. 440 plus 1 equals 441. 441 divided by 3 equals 147, which is, which is an exact value with no decimals. So here, we can assume that d equals 147. So on to encryption. Encrypting a message uses public-private key encryption, which can be done in a number of ways, but the concept is still the same. If you have a long string of letters, you're going to have to decipher the text into separate numbers according to each letter in the message. You can check out my other video on how to create cipher keys and blocks. But assuming you already know how to plain text cipher block, let's simply encrypt the letter F, which is the sixth letter of the alphabet. So we will use six as the message value. To encrypt the message, we are going to use the following equation. C equals M raised to the E mod N. Just in case you don't know what the operation mod means, it means that whichever number is after mod, that's going to be the remainder of whichever number you divided into what's before mod. To show you, we will do it this way. C equals M, which is 6 in our case, because remember we are encrypting the letter F. It's going to be 6 raised up to E, which is 3, mod n, which is 253, 6 raised to 3, mod 256, or 253 equals 216. And I just know that because I just went into wolframealpha.com, which I just animated down at the bottom, and I typed into the evaluation bar, which is a great tool to use, by the way, when trying to do complex equations. Okay, so now, since you have C, which is 216, 
that's going to be your encryption key, or in this case, the public key used to send out a message. In order to decrypt this key, you have to have D, which is what you figured out earlier. Looking at the equation to decrypt the message is M equals C raised to the D mod N. Having the values already figured out, it's going to be C, which is 216, raised to D, which you figured out was 147, mod 253, which equals 6. 6 is the value of your original message. Once handed over the cipher keys, however, you can then figure out what the 6 stands for. And in this case, the 6 stands for the letter F. And that's basically it on how to create a public and private key for encryption and decryption. As you can see, this is far more complex than the symmetric key encryption, which is why it makes it more secure. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, and with that being said, be sure to check out our website at www.redport-ia.com, where we offer quality information, assurance, and computer security, as well as liking our Facebook page at www.facebook.com slash redport, and following us on Twitter at redport underscore IA. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.